Hey guys, thanks for thanks for joining us again. Uh, Chris, today we're going to talk about a shower. We are going to talk about a shower. Yeah, so let me tell you why. Uh, in 2019 at Overland Expo West, I saw this, did a double take as I walked by the table because it's a fairly compact uh, compact unit. We did a quick video, but we didn't do a complete teardown. Now, you got your hands on one, and uh, tell us like what did you like right away? You've had some more time with this, right? Right. So. Really the highlights are limited water use, three liters and you get a really good clean compared to 20 liters of your typical solar shower. Right. And just the system and the way it's designed and how it gets you clean with limited resources was just for us and the ability to take a shower quickly. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, we'll break it down to pros and cons um, and I'll let you make your decision on what you think at the end, but uh, I'll tell you what I thought. Okay, cool deal. Let's get into it. All right, let's go. Okay, so let's get into this. We're gonna uh, take out what's in the box. I'm gonna show you what you get. There are two types that you get. I've had this now for a couple months. I've put it through some good paces and um, I'm gonna show you what I found. So first of all, you'll notice they're two different colors and that's not just because. This is a heated unit. We'll actually heat the water up for you. And this is the non-heated unit where you have to heat your own water if you want a hot shower. We'll open it up. They are basically identical except for that one component, and we'll go over that. What you get in the box is you get a little bit of Castile peppermint soap, which is the best for being out in the wilderness. You get a sponge in a resealable bag. And part of the system, part of the key of the system is the sponge. It's got a scrubby side, it's got a soft side, and you'll see just how effective it is in actually cleaning you and getting the soap with minimal water to you. What I like is it comes with its own resealable bag. So when it's done, you put it back in, you seal it up. Um, speaking to Geyser, there are antimicrobial properties to the sponges, so you can use them for a long time and feel safe putting them back in the bag. And then obviously change them out as you see fit. They also come in different colors. They say you can use them to wash dishes with one color and each person gets their own. I'll leave that up to you as to what you want to do. And then the box, and then there's the unit. That's it. It holds three liters of water on the tank side and then the pump is on this side and the heater on the heater one is on that side as well. It's got a very good positive connection that locks for the water tubing and a missile switch for operation of the pump. All of your wires live inside the tank for transport. It comes with, I haven't measured it, but you know, it's about four-ish feet of water hose and 16 feet of power cable. Now, one thing I did notice was no matter how long I let this sit and dry upside down on the bench in the garage, there's still condensation and moisture in there. All these components have some water on them. So I would not recommend long-term storage of these components in the tank. However, I did speak with uh, Jonathan at Geyser, the uh, owner and inventor, and he assures me that the stainless steel and the componentry can handle the moisture. Um, I still wouldn't do it. I just, water and metal long-term just don't work for me. But there you go. It sets up super easy. This plugs into the water port and you lock it down and then you hook the sponge up to the valve. Now, a few things with the valve. They are on version two and they have a video out which explains the differences between the first version and the second version. But basically they crack right here and you get water spraying out of the valve instead of going through the sponge. I still think that you need to be careful about when you connect it because you can actually bend and strip the little notches that help lock it in place. But other than that, I think it works very well and it's very straightforward to use once you line it up right, which takes obviously a little bit of practice. There we go. Okay, so let's get this filled up and plugged in and then we'll show you how it works. If you're enjoying the episode today, continue the adventure. Become an Overland Bound member. We exist to connect you with the great outdoors through vehicle dependent travel because adventure is necessary. For less than the price of a fancy cup of coffee a month, our members get full access to the Overland Bound One app on iOS and Android where you can connect with our worldwide community, plan your next adventure, and find trips, trails, campsites, and other destinations. 
our members also get thousands of dollars worth of discounts on their favorite Overland gear. Join the Overland Bound crew today and take your first step to your next great adventure. Okay, so we've got it filled up to the blue line. It's basically where the black plastic housing meets the tank. It's just supposed to be watertight. They do, you know, I don't know if I would recommend driving around with it full, but you supposedly can. Um, I haven't seen any problems with leaks when I've twisted it and moved it and put it in different positions. So uh, we've got that filled up. So it does come with 16 feet of power cord with the standard cigarette lighter plug. I got one right here. Plug that in and then just go find the end of it and plug it into the back and you are now ready to go. Now, this is the heated unit and the testing that we did, it was a 100 degree day. We put, uh, I have all the specs, but basically we put about 75 degree water in and it took 20 minutes to get up to 95 degrees uh, using the heater and it drew about eight and a half to nine amps. Took my battery from 100% down to about 97% and then from 97% down to about 96%, 97 or 5% on the second go around. A few things with the heated one, um, due to some sensor issues with their thermostat, it got one heating and then we couldn't cool the thermostat down to do a second heating without putting ice water in it. So really it was effective for one heating, but not good for two. Um, that is something they are working on and uh, we'll have some hopefully uh, overcome that by the time this thing is really out there for people but be cautious of that with the heated one also unless you have a secondary battery it, it could jeopardize your starter battery if you are um, relying just on your starter if you're not running the car so that's just something to keep in mind um, personally after using both of them and testing both of them I don't think that the heated one is really worth the extra money uh, for most of us who overland Someone who might not have access to a camp stove or the ability to heat water on their own may appreciate the, the heated version of it, but having a camp stove and being able to heat up water and just mix it with there is the way to go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this uh, right now. I'm not gonna heat it up just because I don't need to have the hot water right now. As I said, it does come with the Castile soap. I'm gonna use the one that I've had open because it lasts forever and Basically, you get to adjust volume of water flow with the valve right here. If it's fully open, you get about a minute. It's a one minute per gallon pump. And when it's just cracked open, you get about 15 minutes worth of use through the sponge. I found that about halfway, you get about seven minutes and that's a really good amount of time. A little fuse in there. Uh, I've had one blow, so if I were you, I would get a replacement just in case. You open up the missile switch and you hit pump and you hear just a little, um, because the water is off. It is a flow activated. So that's on the low setting. That's full court. You now have water through the sponge. You can turn it off. Got your sponge wet. Doesn't take a lot. A couple little drops of soap on there. Mix it up. Now I find, like I said, about halfway is where you want to be. Maybe even a little bit less like that. And now you're going to just get a good clean like this. And you're gonna get, like I said, at this flow rate, seven solid minutes of cleaning. And there's a soft side, a little grimier, there's a scrubby side. And that's just gonna go on like that for the entire time that you wanna wash your body and wash your bits off. So what we recommend and what I really enjoyed for myself, I can do myself and both my kids with uh, three liters of water. So that was pretty easy. Uh, washing hair, actually just get it wet. For those with short hair, it's pretty nice. It's very easy. Um, if you have longer hair though, one of the little party tricks is if you take the sponge off, act, keep the pump as active, you actually can get, let's see how we can aim this. So you can get a good spray. Like that went, I'm 12 feet right there, full court. That'll get you, that'll hose you down. So on a hot day, that's very refreshing. Uh, if you have warm water, and you only have about a minute of that, so you don't want to do too much of it. So that's the basic use of it. I think you can get a really good shower for minimal use. Let's see. 
A um, few things, on, they'll tell you if the temperature's above or below 95 uh, for both of them. If it's, uh, you know, there's a safety feature, uh, it won't let it be too hot, otherwise it won't pump. Let's see, there we go. Now, that used up about 40%, and I always kind of wasting water showing in spring. So, one good shower, probably get two decent showers, or you with the kid. Um, a few things kind of talk about the negatives I don't particularly like this handle I think the handle is awkward for carrying I think that the um, position of it makes it difficult to pack uh, that was mentioned to you guys there and they're actually looking in the way to fix that uh, if you do get the heated one be aware that in the off position it is straight up and down and if you flip the missile switch down you actually put it into pump position so you have to be careful on how you close it they are also working on that. Um, but that's really kind of it. Overall, three liters of water and you get a really good clean. Heating it, buy the non-heated one if you already have a camp stove especially. Um, otherwise, very portable. I think you get a good clean out of it. Sponges, you just buy replacing sponges as you need them. As I said, once you squeeze them out, you put them back in the little bag and you're good to go. And overall, I think this is a very solid system for keeping you clean, um, improving your hygiene, which improves your sleep and your rest, uh, makes camp more enjoyable. You're more likely to get your significant other out there if they're not necessarily interested in camping because of the hygiene thing. And you can take this anywhere. It doesn't even have to be camping. Go for a run, go for a ride, kayak, whatever you do. So overall, I think it's just a real solid product and I'm happy to add it to my kit. Um, but again, I'll be adding the non-heated one. There you go. Chris, thanks for doing that. I learned about yeah. 57 different things. Good. That's awesome. Good. Hey, so uh, where like, where can people find out more about this? So geyser.com. I think it's geysersystems.com technically. Okay. But just Google geyser systems. Uh, you can buy them from their website. Um, again, you know, the, so far customer service has been very responsive. I did get the two units with the broken valves, and they replaced them right away with cool. the new upgraded version. Um, but yeah. No, I think it's a solid system. Cool. Right on. All right, you guys. Hopefully, we'll see you on the trail. Stay clean. <laughs>